How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the federal mask mandate coming to an end in airports and on flights in the entirety of the U.S. Now, if you're going abroad, like if you're going to Canada, you're going to UK, I'm not really sure about that. That's a whole different animal. But if you're going from, let's say, New York to Los Angeles, Miami to Chicago, anywhere in the USA, there's no longer a mask mandate in the airport, walking around the concourse, going through TSA, or on the flight itself. This was a ruling that was made by Judge Catherine Kimball Mizell. She's a U.S. District Judge for the U.S. District Court in the Middle District of Florida. All right. Now, there's like a 59-page ruling, and if you want to read that, I'll link to it in the box. But what I'm going to do is read a little bit of a summary from what she wrote, and then I'm going to get into it. I'm going to talk about how all the flight attendants are jumping for joy. Everybody's loving it. I'm loving it. It's about time. It makes sense. And I'm going to also speak about those who think this is a bad thing. And I'm going to talk about the flight attendants who have gotten quite a bit of flack overall in this entire situation. But this is her right there. Um, Donald Trump appointee. I think she was 33 years old when she got appointed. She's 35 or 36 now. So this makes her the youngest appointee. Um, I'm not sure if it's just in Florida or ever. If y'all know the exact uh, details behind that, y'all let me know in the comments. But that's her right there. She's the reason why there's no longer a mass mandate on airplanes or in airports. So here's a little bit of it. This story's on New York Times. Again, I'll link to all my sources in the description box. But we're going to get to like a couple paragraphs here and move on. So Biden had called on the CDC to impose a mass mandate for travelers shortly after his inauguration. And the agency did so starting on February 2nd, 2021. It extended that mandate several times. In July 2021, the Health Freedom Defense Fund, a Wyoming-based advocacy group, filed a lawsuit challenging its legality. So I think they most recently extended the mask mandate up until May 2nd. But the judge came in and said, nah, this ain't, this, this is not right. It's unconstitutional. This, this is not what we're going to do. Okay. In a statement, the group called the ruling a, quote, victory for basic American liberty and the rule of law and quoted its president, Leslie uh, Manukian, as adding, quote, unelected officials cannot do whatever they like to our personal freedoms just because they claim good motives and a desirable goal. Exactly. If you could just have anybody say, okay, you got to do that. You got to do that. It's like, well, who voted for you, sir? Or ma'am, who exactly puts you in a position of power? Who put a crown on your head to make all these rules and decisions from the CDC and whatnot? I didn't vote for anybody on the CDC to be there. So why did they have dominion over my life to tell me what to do and how to do it and when to do it? Not a fan at all. You can recommend whatever you want to recommend, but as far as mandating and dictating, I think not. But I'll move on. In her ruling, Judge Mazel adopted a narrow interpretation of the authority Congress granted to the CDC to issue rules aimed at preventing the interstate spread of communicable diseases. The law says the agency may take such measures as it deems, quote, necessary, unquote, and provides a list of examples like, quote, unquote, sanitation. The judge wrote that this power was limited to things like cleaning property, not requiring people to take hygienic steps. Facts. Makes a lot of sense to me. Quote, if Congress intended this definition, the power bestowed on the CDC would be breathtaking, unquote, she wrote. Quote, and it certainly would not be limited to the modest measures of, quote unquote, sanitation like masks. E exactly. If the government's broader interpretation of the agency's powers were accurate, she added, the CDC could require businesses to install air filtration systems, mandate that people take vi vaccines or even require coughing into elbows and daily multivitamins. E e exactly. R right on point. OK, but there's more here, of course. And this article will be in the box. But I think this is something that's way past due. It should never have happened to begin with because we all know the masks don't work. They came out there and said that Leanna Nguyen, who was a former, I think she was the head of Planned Parenthood or something over at Planned Parenthood. Now she's a prominent doctor that goes on CNN. She said that on air, the mask that you wear, the mask that you see in the airplane, in the airport, that's not going to work. Okay. Now, they say that the N95 may work, 
but who's wearing the N95? Usually when you are on the plane or in the airport, you're seeing a regular cloth mask at best. At, at best, it's a regular cloth mask. And if you could smell anything through that mask, it's not working because your, your, the smell is going to your nose through particles in the air. The virus has smaller particles than what is required for you to be able to smell something. The, the smell particle, if that's a, a correct word, a correct way to say it, is much bigger than the virus particle. So what are we doing? It's just something that makes you feel good. Anthony Fauci himself even said that right when the scandemic first popped. But then he reversed course because he understood that the mask, it makes people feel comfortable. It makes them not freak out. It reduces the panic. It's all about trying to control people socially. It's not about actual science or anything like that. It's about social control, trying to prevent civil unrest. It's very simple, right? It's, it's so simple, but we all know the masks don't work. They came out and said it. You're not wearing an N95. You're wearing a regular Old Navy t-shirt fashioned into a mask with little strings on it or the neck gaiter. You're just not doing it. You can get vape smoke and um, all kind of smell particles. It ain't working. That's number one. But number two, if you're on the airplane, that's probably the best place to be. Being on the airplane is safer than being in a restaurant. And if you go to a restaurant, you're not wearing a mask. Okay, you're eating food. How are you going to eat food with a mask on? That's impossible. Even if you're doing the goofy stuff like putting your mask on in between bites, all that kind of weird stuff. Even if you're doing that, as soon as you take the mask off to eat, to, to consume a bite, you don't let all the particles out and you chewing. And your, your, your cloth mask, you're getting all kind of schmutz in the mask, out the mask. It's gross. It's gross. And then I'm seeing some reports where they're saying for the first time, people have found, uh, they, they found microplastics in people's lungs. I wonder how that happened. I wonder what's in your mask that came from somewhere in China, India, on some floor. You don't even wash it. You put it straight on your face. I wonder where uh, the, all those plastics in your lungs come from and i wonder why that's coming out right now just all of a sudden is it just happenstance or is it because of this whole mask uh wearing epidemic i don't know but i'm just asking some questions and to get back to the airplane the airplane is safe because you have constant air filtration constant you don't have that in the restaurant it's just a stagnant air you might open the door up to get into the restaurant maybe but they got double doors. You go to a cheesecake factory, you get a little foyer area. You can't even get fresh air in for real, for real. So if you're on an airplane, you have constantly filtered air. It's a safe space. All right. Even if the mask did kind of work a little bit, you still eat on the airplane too. All right. They're passing out snacks and drinks and everything else. I didn't had a whole meal on the airplane before. They didn't give me a whole sandwich, a steak sandwich. Or, you know, you can get drinks, alcohol, all that kind of stuff. So it's just, it didn't make any sense. It's ridiculous. And I know the flight attendants are the most happy out of all. They, I, I showed a clip at the beginning of the man singing. I'm seeing uh, flight attendants dancing, just celebrating, taking the mask off because unlike us that just get on the flight, you might be on one flight a day, maybe two at the most, at the most. Okay, but usually one flight a day, you leave on a Friday, come back Sunday, the typical thing, right? But they're wearing their mask the entire day. They, they got to wear it 12, 14 hours a day. As soon as they get to the airport, all throughout their flights, and then up until they leave the airport, they got to have their mask on. All right. Maybe they can take the mask off to eat like everybody else. But beyond that, they got to wear their mask. And there's always a conflict on the plane between people who want to wear their mask and people who don't want to wear their mask. You know, people say, oh, well, they, they were enforcing the whole mask thing. I mean, you have some people that are just kind of a little bit too gung ho with it. But at the same time, that's their job. They got to do their job. Right. A lot of people that quit. A lot of flight attendants had quit over the whole mask thing and the vaccine thing. Let's not forget that because I think up until recently, Delta or one of these airlines, pardon me if I'm saying the wrong thing, but one of the airlines were charging their employees actually 200 bucks. I think it might've been a month or a week, at least 200 bucks a month for their insurance because they were unvaccinated and they just recently wrote that back. So you had flight attendants paying more money for insurance, flight attendants that got fired, I mean, all types of stuff, put on permanent leave, unpaid or whatever, because they didn't want to get the vax or maybe they didn't want to wear the mask. So people had suffered as a result. And you got to understand this is somebody's job. This is their livelihood. They got to, you know, they might got kids and everything else to feed. So, I mean, 
it, it's just not right. They are in the same boat as a regular person that's not a flight attendant that has to go to work and they got to put on a mask or they got to get a vaccine. It's the same thing. They don't want to enforce this. They don't want to be no airplane police. But if they don't enforce the mask mandate, then you're going to have those who want the mask mandate to happen. The Karens of the world, they're going to file a complaint, get the flight attendant in trouble, get the airline in trouble, Delta United, whatever. And then people want to fight over wearing a mask, not wearing a mask, all that kind of good stuff on the plane. People been drinking, they agitated because they got to wear a mask at their job. It's a whole big mess. So the best thing for everybody, flight attendants, normies, whoever you are, is take the mask off. You're safe on an airplane, constant air filtration. If you feel like you're sick and you can't get from point A to point B, then just stay at the crib, reschedule your vacation. Mexico is still going to be there. You'd be able to go to Cancun and, and get drunk and get robbed whenever you want to go back. Whenever you feel healthy enough to go engage in that venture, then go do it. But if you're not healthy enough, stay at the crib. And if you're so scared of somebody um, sneezing and you might get sick, I mean, just don't go outside for real. Because I remember when I was back in my day, when I used to have to walk 80 miles in the snow to school, you know, but back in the day, I mean, you was you used to go to chicken pox parties and, you know, getting sick wasn't even the big deal. It's like, okay, you got to get exposed to the germs to build your immune system. Now you got grown adults, 80 years old, not 80, that's a bad number, um, 55 years old, trying to live in the bubble, talking about I'm scared of the bug. The bug is out there. It is what it is. What you going to do? Stop living life as a result. But as I close, I want to say this. Shout out to all the flight attendants who are celebrating right now. Shout out to everybody that wants to fly but doesn't want to wear their mask. And shout out to those who are waking up to all this, who are just saying, okay, this is ridiculous. I don't see the science. I see politics. I see money. I see greed. I see bureaucracy. I see control. Okay. And I think the Biden administration don't want the mask mandate either because they understand that we don't want it. If they really wanted the mask mandate for the air planes and airports, they probably would fight it, but they're not fighting it. That's just my humble opinion. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what said you? How do you feel about this decision or this ruling from Judge Catherine Campbell Mizell blocking the mask mandate for airports and flights? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. It's a happy day. No, when I'm in the airport, I'm doing whatever I can to not wear the mask. Okay. When I'm going through, like if I'm just going from point A to point B, I have one of those masks with the strings on it. I'm hanging it like an earring. You understand what I'm saying? It's like right there. When I go, when I go to TSA, they like, all right. Um, like when I go to the TSA line to present my pass and my, um, my ID, they say, take, take the mask off. It's already off. Okay. And then once I go to the actual, the, the, the conveyor belt, put my stuff on, take my belt off. I got to put the mask on for a moment to go through the metal detector. And once I'm out, I take it back off and don't nobody say nothing to me. It's so stupid. It's the dumbest thing in the world. And on the flight I'm eating. So once I'm eating, my mask is completely off earring again. How about just not keep it on at all? What's the purpose in even wearing it? And if somebody wants to wear it, it's optional. They're not saying you can't wear it. If you want to wear the mask, go for it. Knock yourself out, but not me. And I think most of you guys are in the same boat that I am. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.